So what is a keynote speech? What's a seminar, workshop, masterclass? And what are all these different sorts of speaker? What's a link presenter? What's an MC? Is a keynote speaker different from a seminar speaker? So let me try and answer at least some of those. Firstly, what is a keynote? Well, for me, a keynote is 30 minutes, 45 minutes, maybe 60 minutes. Speaking at a conference or a convention, typically you're talking hundreds, maybe thousands of people. A keynote speech is not interactive. It is a carefully honed, let's say 45 minutes, that's designed to give your delegates the maximum takeaways. It takes them through something of an emotional journey. It will involve stories. It will be absolutely on time. Not a minute late, not a minute early. Now an opening keynote, of course, has a different job to do to a closing keynote, for example. An opening keynote knows that his or her job is to make sure, frankly, the delegates stay. They may have booked the conference some months ago, can't now quite remember why they did, and, and the opening keynote's job is to hook those people to make sure they stay. The closing keynote's job, of course, is quite different. The closing keynote is to try and make sure that the dele delegates book for next year. And then you have the keynoters in between who are very much focused on their subject and giving their audience the maximum takeaways and linking to other keynoters so the whole event looks totally seamless. That's what a professional speaker would expect to do. That's what a keynote speaker would expect to do. Now there are some professional speakers who only do keynotes. But I guess the majority would do keynotes and they would do seminars. Now a seminar for me is one hour, two hours, possibly three hours absolute maximum. And it is to some extent interactive and generally it's for smaller numbers, maybe a couple of hundred people maybe 300 absolute maximum. What about a workshop or a masterclass? Where well, a workshop tends to be, again, smaller numbers again. Maybe 40 or 50 people, maybe it's half a day, maybe it's a full day, maybe it's a couple of days, where the subject is everything. And finally, a masterclass. What's a masterclass? Well, a masterclass really, being somewhat grand about it, is an audience with an expert, a guru, an absolutely top speaker, a top expert in their subject. Typically you're talking either one day or two days, where again the delegates feel that it's an exclusive event and they are taking away some very, very special information from that masterclass. So what about the other people? Um, what's an MC and what's the difference between an MC and a link presenter and a moderator? Well, an MC is the person that links between speakers, but you don't notice them. They're pretty inobtrusive, but they are running the show. They're making sure, from your point of view, out front, everything is running smoothly, and there is connections made between speeches and other activities going on at the event. A link presenter, however, does all that also, ha also has a presence. They may be someone who's telling jokes, they may be doing magic, but they are in themselves someone who's bringing uh, something by way of a performance. A moderator is different again. A moderator is more about getting information out of people. I always see a moderator sitting in the middle of the audience and they, what they're doing is pulling together a debate amongst the audience, a discussion amongst the audience, so that everyone is getting the absolute maximum. So how do you go about booking these people? Well, times are changing. There are still lots of organisations that would go to an event management company who in turn would go to a number of speakers bureaus who in turn would put forward a number of speakers for the event. What I'm seeing these days is that's he happening less and less. Organisations, companies are looking to make sure that they get real return on their investment and that the focus now is increasingly becoming upon content of what's going to go on in the event and most particularly what the speaker is going to say. I find it's not unusual these days for me to be dealing directly with the chief executive or it might be the vice president of marketing 
and I'm also finding it's not unusual for me to have an interview or maybe even an audition. Sometimes I'm even invited to spend one or two days at the premises of the organisation well ahead of the event so that I can tailor the absolute maximum of what I do to, to their needs and the needs of their delegates. I mentioned uh, timing. A professional speaker will respond to your needs. It really is not unusual if you've got one or two speakers who perhaps are not all that experienced that they overrun. And if you have to come to a professional speaker and say, look, I know I said 45 minutes for your keynote, could you please do it in 30? Then he or she will do it. Your audience won't know, they will still get the maximum takeaways. It will be seamless. I guess the worst situation I've ever had uh, at a conference was where I was booked to do a 45 minute keynote, but in the end I had 12 minutes. And in those 12 minutes I still had to grip that audience and to give that audience a motivational and inspirational experience. That's what you're paying for. Now what about overseas speakers? What about speakers who are coming from other countries to speak for you? It's here I would suggest that you really do need to be very careful and to do your research. There is a cadre of speakers, international speakers, most of which would be members of professional speaking associations around the world, who speak internationally regularly and understand the needs. They know that they can't use stories and anecdotes that are nationalistic and local to their home. They know the things they can and they can't do in different parts of the world. And absolutely vitally important, they know how to deal with translation, translators, and, and all the consequences. So I would strongly recommend if you're looking to recruit a professional speaker, you look at some detail into what it is they've done before, what it is that they can offer for you. And you won't go far wrong. There are many speakers, and I'd include myself in that, who keynote, uh, run seminars, and do master classes. I indeed also do the consulting thereafter. It very much depends upon the subject, and indeed upon the individual, as to where it is that they have the expertise and where they put their focus. But you need to check in advance to make sure that whoever it is you're booking absolutely knows and understands whatever you are looking for by way of the different ways of getting their message, their expertise to your audience. Finally, we've not mentioned after-dinner speakers. Um, they are just that. There are particular skills involved with speaking after dinner, particularly when the audience has uh, perhaps imbibed a little. After dinner speakers are a specific breed and most keynote speakers would not call themselves after dinner speakers and vice versa. They are very specific and you need to be absolutely clear what type of after dinner speaker you're looking for, whether it's for example a humorist or a magician or, or, or whatever. So let me sum up. The different media, the different ways of projecting information through a speaker are a keynote speech at a conference, a seminar, which would be generally somewhat interactive, a workshop which would be interactive, highly interactive, and a masterclass. And they vary from 20 minutes at the one end to maybe two, maybe even three days at the other end. How do you choose the speaker for your event? I guess my checklist would be you firstly need to decide what you are looking for by way of expertise, what subject you're looking for, and what you expect your audience to take away. What are your objectives? Then you need to do a bit of homework in terms of what they've done before. Look at testimonials. Testimonials are incredibly valuable. And indeed contact the people who have given the testimonial. If you're looking at an international speaker, absolutely vital that you satisfy yourself that that's something he or she does regularly and does fully understand. I've just seen so many situations where a foreign speaker hasn't done their homework and really it just simply doesn't work. Talk to them, meet with them ahead of the event if possible. 
so that you can really make an evaluation and then also, if possible, see them some more and get them into your organisation, into your needs, your objectives of the event. The more they can understand those, the more they can tailor what they are going to do to give you what you need to meet your objectives.